Well, my first reaction is to define what I would call the singularity constant. That is, the singularity is always at least 30 years in the future. But <laughs> coming seriously to your question, I don't think you need to go 60 years into the future because narrow AI is raising huge problems. Let's just take one area, and that is facial or bodily movement recognition. That can be used to detect criminals in a crowd and police forces are using it. But we know in our world today that it can be also used as surveillance technology to suppress an ethnic minority and create huge problems for, for groups of people. So we're already there in the scary side of narrow AI. Now, I'm well aware that People like the late Stephen Hawking, uh, they were scared. He, he said um, the real risk with AI is not malice but competence. A super intelligent AI will be extremely good at accomplishing its goals. And if those goals aren't aligned with ours, we are in trouble. But I really feel that the problem that's faced at the moment is that the technology is outpacing the ethics at a colossal speed. And that the business of building ethical norms into systems, the arms race, of course, is a, a particular example with autonomous weapons and all this kind of stuff, which we could come on to. But I'm concerned at the moment with what we observe, even with the simplest of things, the fact that my shopping leaves a digital trail and there's a thing that has been called surveillance capitalism. There's a fascinating book by uh, a woman called Shoshana Zuboff of MIT. And it's a very serious book pointing out that what's happening, partly with our permission, because we wear the digital technologies in our smartphones, but the information that's being harvested without our permission is being sold on and, and billions are being made uh, from that kind of thing. That raises massive problems of the intrusion of privacy and so on. So the next 60 years uh, seem to be to going to be make that a great deal worse unless we find some way of policing this thing, of uh, somehow controlling it. And that is a major problem that people are beginning to realize. And you find there are several efforts where you get many leading thinkers in artificial intelligence signing documents and saying, we've got to develop ethical principles, like, for example, the Asilomar principles for, for AI. So that's where the problem lies. So, so Paul, do you agree that, that John's put his finger on the greatest peril there? Or do you think there's another more significant than that. Well, I started out by giving this sort of grandiose uh, million-year view of uh, <laughs> multi-generational uh, AIs um, as the long-term worry, but in the short term, of course, we're a long way from that. And uh, Frank uh, Wilczek has uh, remarked in connection with this uh, subject that uh, he's less concerned about... Uh, artificial intelligence than about human stupidity. Uh, and I think yes. uh, what John is referring to in this intermediate phase is where we have a combination of both. So we have the power of artificial intelligence to do the bidding of, um, in some cases, bad actors. Uh, so they have at their disposal this enormous technology. And uh, surveillance is, of course, one that, uh, that I uh, deeply share uh, uh, share anxieties about because uh, in many cases we're throwing away uh, the very rights and privileges that our uh, forebears fought for and they've all been tossed away uh, just um, uh, within uh, a decade or two sometimes on just uh, rather trivial grounds grounds of convenience for example uh, so that uh, that is obviously a worry but one of the things John alludes to in his book um, uh, but if you make a comparison, say, he, he mentioned about the knife, of course, a good example, a more contemporary example is nuclear power. We, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be talking to you now, incidentally, if it wasn't for the nuclear power station here in Arizona, which is providing a, at least some of the electricity <laughs> that we're using. Um, 
but uh, we don't worry too much about you know a crazy uh, student in Belarus or something uh, making a, a nuclear bomb uh, in his uh, in his bedroom. Um, but when it comes to AI uh, and computer hacking and uh, access to uh, the enormous computational power that is networked around the world, we can imagine uh, a crazy student uh, uh, unleashing something quite terrible. And, and of course, it has happened with just simple um, ma malware and so forth. But it could go easily go well beyond this, uh, that if you can harness uh, the, this ability by hacking into it, then that seems to me to to present all sorts of dangers. So we really are in unknown territory, and we don't know how to regulate it. I don't know what the institutions might be that would regulate it.